Today is not the vision message, but I do believe it is the on-ramp to the vision message. And this verse just grabbed a hold of my heart a couple weeks ago, and, and I've been waiting to share it with you because I, I think it's such a, a unique and powerful scripture. If you want to turn there with me, go to Joshua chapter 10, and I want to start reading at verse number 12. If you're if you grew up in Sunday school, you'll remember this story, but you may not have heard this verse. Joshua chapter 10, starting with verse number 12. At that time, Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the sons of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still at Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance on their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jashar? The sun stopped in the midst of the heaven and did not hurry to set for about a whole day. Verse 14, here it is. There has been no day like it before or since. When the Lord heeded the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. God, may this scripture come to life in our hearts, in our lives, in our faith today. Father, I pray that you would download faith into us that we could be a person that would step up and speak and see miracles and signs and wonders performed. God, let this message set the course for everything that's about to follow in the year 2022. Two, 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 triple double. God, I'm believing it's a year for triple double in my life. And Lord, I just ask you today, if you could anoint the Bengals, we would really like to clinch our division, God. If you could help us, we'd, we need hope in this time, Lord, and that'd be, bring great hope in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Look, some of the brothers in the church, that's the first time they felt the Spirit all morning long. They're like, yay, Pastor, yay. I, I, look, I stood on the field last year. We did, a, we did an interview with one of the Bengals coaches that goes to church here, and I stood on the field and I prophesied a Super Bowl. I believe my word shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. How did we get to Joshua chapter 10? This has been a long road. Moses has led the children out of Egypt, wandered in the wilderness 40 years. Moses lost his temper. God said, you're not going to enter the promised land. You're going to transfer power over to Joshua. This was his understudy. Uh, Moses was not a man of war, but Joshua was a trained soldier, general, captain, a, a man that knew how to fight. And so Joshua gets this power, and, and right off the bat, God encounters Joshua, and he tells him, he said, Moses is dead. In other words, there is something behind you that you need to leave behind you. It brought you this far, but it can't take you where I plan on taking you. He's dead. You need to move on. Now, I've told you before that God did not allow anyone to know where the burial site of Moses was. Because if people knew where Moses was buried, they would have built a memorial and they would have lived there the rest of their life. God wants you to celebrate what he's done, but he doesn't want you to only live on what he's done. He wants you to believe he's a God that can do more. So Joshua, he, he gets this encounter with an angel, and Joshua's ready to fight the angel. That's how, that's how much of a fighter he was. He said, whose side are you on? The angel said, I'm on nobody's side except the Lord's side. And then God began to speak to Joshua, and he said, as I was with Moses so will I be with you. I'm not going to do things in your life the way I did it through Moses, but I will be with you like I was with Moses. Moses used a rod and parted seas, but Joshua, you're going to have to step in the water. Moses' feet were dry, but your feet's going to be wet. You're going to have to step in the water before I back them up. So he said, I'm going to be with you, but not like I was with Moses, but not, not like I used Moses, but I will be with you like I was with Moses. So Joshua goes across the Jordan River. You know the story. They march around Jericho. And then after they get the victory at Jericho, somebody in the, in the camp of the people of Israel took what belonged to God. This is a principle of the tithe. 
They will ultimately conquer ten cities. But because they took from the first city, God cursed Achan and he died and his family, anyone related to him was put to death. Why? Because they brought a curse on the whole country, on the whole people of Israel because they took what belonged to God. Don't go into this year taking from the tithe. The tithe is not yours to spend. The tithe is God's. It's sanctified. It's holy. It's set apart. Give it to God and he'll bless all of your life. So God said, give me Jericho and I'll give you everything in every other city you conquer. Well, he took, they go up and fight Ai and you know the story. Ai whips them, Ai defeats them. He finds where Achan had sinned. Achan's put to death, his family's put to death. They go back to war with Ai and they defeat them and they come out victorious. Well, during this time, there is a people, the people of Gibeon. They come to Joshua and they say, make a treaty with us. Joshua, now he is a great character study of a leader who has good points and bad points. In some ways, he is a faithful, strong, powerful leader. But in other ways, he's impulsive. And when he goes to make a decision, he fails to take the time to pray. He enters into a treaty with Gibeon, and he never consults God about it. Well, as soon as he goes into treaty with Gibeon, there are five kings. They were all enemies, but they got together because they wanted to attack Gibeon. But now they find out that Joshua is in a treaty and he's made a pact with the people of Gibeon. Always remember, whenever you're making progress, your enemies will find a way to come together to stop you. People that don't even get along once you start making progress will become best friends to keep you from doing what God called you to do. So they come together, they go to fight against Gibeon. Gibeon goes to Joshua and said, you made a treaty with us, now you have to come defend us. Because he didn't pray about this, he now has to go defend the people of Gibeon. Now Joshua starts talking to God about it. He realized the mistake he made, but he's not going to make that mistake again. Before he makes any more decisions, he is going to consult the Lord. Let me tell you, you'll never go wrong, no matter what decision you have to make, if you just take the time to consult God about it. And when you consult God about it, you may not, it may not always feel like the safest decision, but God will always speak to you with a voice of peace. Follow peace in this new year. It may be the biggest risk you've ever taken. It may be the biggest step of faith you've ever taken. But I promise you, if you've consulted God about it, he will give you peace. And so Joshua goes and he begins to fight. And so the armies start to get away. And do you know what God does? God rains down hail on them and kills the men that are trying to escape. In other words... When God, when you go to fight the enemy in 2022, God's not going to let your enemy get away. He's going to say, come right back here, get right back here. You're not going anywhere until my children get done with you. Children of God that walk in faith are going to defeat the enemy and the enemy you see this day, you will never see again because God is fighting for you. So Joshua steps up, the running out of daylight and he doesn't have time to whip this army. And if, if night falls, they're going to get away. So Joshua stands up. He lifts his hands and he says, Sun, stand still. Moon, stop. And the moon and the sun stopped for the span of a day until the armies of God could defeat their enemies. Imagine the authority that you could speak to the sun and the moon. And God didn't just stop. You see, you got you to get bigger with this. When God created the universe, the whole universe is acting in harmony. One doesn't move without the other. So when, when Joshua spoke, God didn't just pull the e-brake on the sun. And he didn't just pull it on the moon. Or in other words, he didn't just stop the earth from moving and the earth from spinning. God stopped the entire universe in its tracks because one man stood up with unusual faith and spoke with great authority and said, God, I got to defeat this enemy today. How did Joshua get that level of authority? I don't want to get ahead of myself. Here's how. Encounter imparts authority. 
He had an encounter with God, therefore he had authority with God. Joshua can speak in chapter 10 and stop the sun because he had an encounter with God in chapter 1. You can only command when you've been given authority by a commander. The reason some of you don't have authority in your life is because you don't spend time with the author. If you would spend time with the author, he would impart to you authority. Authority in God only comes from time with God. People who walk with great authority in God are people who have spent time with God. Another thing comes from spending time with God as well. When you spend time with God, he imparts courage into your heart. I've heard it said like this. If you kneel before God, you can stand before any man. Spend time with God. And what happened when Joshua got into the presence with God? And Joshua couldn't live on Moses' encounter. He had to have his own encounter with God. What happened when Joshua had an encounter with God? God spoke to him and said, Joshua, Joshua 1, 9, be strong, be courageous. Do not be afraid, for I, the Lord, am with you wherever you go. Courage comes from time with God. When you spend time with God, he will impart courage into your heart, courage into your mind. There is going to be something, I, I can just, can I prophesy? This is a safe prophecy. Go ahead and put money on it because it will come to pass. There is going to be something this year that will show up and try to cause you to forget what God promised you. Something's going to show up. But if you get alone with God, every time you get, read all the way through the book of Joshua. Every time he gets alone with God, God says to him again, be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid. I'm with you wherever you go. No man shall be able to stand before you. Every time he gets alone with God, be strong, be courageous, do not be afraid. I'm with you wherever you go. No man will be able to stand in front of you. When you begin to feel fear in the year 2022 or anxious in the year 2022 or unsure in the year 2022, get alone with God. He'll give you courage. He'll remind you the promise promises that he's spoken over your life and then he'll give you authority to go out and face your enemy there are two types of people in this room today there are dreamers and there are realists the dreamers are already declaring this is my year the realists are saying you said that last year the dreamers are declaring today wow the realists are going, how? I will tell you, dreamers and realists tend to get married. You balance each other out. You need both. Here's a question I want you to ask today. What do you think is possible for you in this new year? What do you think is possible? Now the dreamers, oh, they just went crazy. The realist started looking at the bills. What do you think is possible for you in the new year? But I want to adjust that question just a little bit because there's a more important question you can start asking today. What does God think is possible for you in the new year? I've learned as I stand here in Forest Park preaching to a church in Lebanon and preaching to a church around the world, I've learned what I thought was possible doesn't even come close to what God thinks is possible. So you can walk out of here saying, what do I think is possible? Or you can walk out of here saying, what does God think is possible for me and my family and my future in this new year? Now maybe you're in here and you don't believe in God. That's okay. Because I want you to know God believes in you. God believes in you. And there's this verse, for, verse 14. There has been no day like it before or since where God heeded. Understand the word heeded. It means God took commands from a man. 
There is never, who tells God what to do? Joshua did. Joshua told God, never before or since has there been a day where a man spoke with such faith and authority that God moved when he spoke. That's impressive. Now some, the realist in the room, say, well, that's a law that's been put in effect. There's never been a day before. There'll never be a day since. I, I don't read it that way. See, I'm a dreamer. So I read it a little bit differently. It just said there has been no day like it before or since. So to me, God left it open-ended. To me, God put a yet on the end. Never before or since has God heeded the voice of a man yet. See, I, I'm believing 2022 is the year of the yet. And I want you to start adding yet to the end of your sentences. My family isn't saved yet. My body isn't completely healed yet. I, don't, I haven't opened that business yet. I, I, I haven't seen my dreams come to pass yet. But I'm not going to end it with a period. I'm going to put a comma and say yet. I believe God's daring me to believe like Joshua believed. And I believe God's going to say one day, never before since Joshua until 2022, did anybody speak with such authority that God listened to them. Somebody give God a big praise in this house. Come on. Let's look at this. What is yet? Yet is possibility. It's possibility. Possibility fuels the potential for a better future. As you sit here today, you have 364 days of possibility. Nothing is set in stone. Nothing. There is nothing in 2022. Well, I just know it's going to get worse. Well, you chose it to get worse. Because the way I'm looking at it is 364 days of God to show himself strong in my life. 364 days for God to prove everybody wrong. 364 days for God to prove doctors wrong. And God to prove economists wrong. And God to prove governments wrong. I'm looking today at 364 days of possibility. Possibility. Here's two thoughts. If you don't think it's possible, you're correct. Second thought. If you do think it's possible, you're correct. I choose to be a doer, not a donor. I'm going to believe God will do exceeding abundantly above all that which I could ever ask or even think. Yeah, but pastor, you got to look at reality. I know there's reality. I know we're, we're, we're in reality right now. I get that. But there's also another realm called possibility. Here's my, here's my word to you. Lease space in the land of reality. Own space in the land of possibility. You say, what's the difference? If you lease something, you don't intend on staying there. If you own something, you intend on living there and passing it down to generations that come after you. Here's what I'm saying. I know I'm in reality, but I'm only leasing space here. I'm not going to be here very long because I'm owning space in the land of possibility. Give God a big praise. Say this with me. What does God think is possible for me in this new year? Say it again. What does God think is possible for me in this new year, what if instead of losing pounds, you lost weight? See what I'm saying? Because until you've carried depression, you don't know what weight is. Until you carried anxiety, you don't know what weight is. 
And while everybody else is stepping on a scale trying to drop a few pounds, I'm over here saying, I want to shed the weight. I want to get rid of everything that distracted me in 2021, everything that tried to hold me back in 2021. You lose your pounds, I'm dropping the weight because I'm moving on to the land of possibility. Never before, never since, until 2022 has God heeded the voice of a man, has God heeded the voice of a woman, has God heeded the voice of a church. So let me teach you just for a moment four steps to living in possibility. Four steps to living in possibility. Number one, control. There are things, if you want to live in the land of possibility, you're going to have to learn to control. In 22, control your temper. In 22, Control your mouth. There's a whole chapter in James on how hard this thing is to control. And I promise you, you will have a better year if you just learn to control this. Especially when this is coming out of these. Or these. Whichever one. Control it. Just because you can say something doesn't mean you need to say something. Stop drawing lines and start drawing circles. Say, what do you mean? When you draw a line, you cut people off. When you draw a circle, make it bigger so that they can come inside of it. My job as a pastor is not to cut people out. My job is to do everything I can to bring them in. And we've got to stop dividing each other with our mouth. Stop dividing each other with our temper. Well, I read something, so I got to respond. No, you don't. You don't. The world will keep on spinning if you don't respond. I promise you. But they need to hear what I think. No, we don't. Ain't nobody paid you. Nobody consulted with you. Nobody said, will you come in and tell us what you think? Control your fear. The Bible says it like this, a man that cannot rule his own spirit is like a city without walls. Control your spirit. If you're out of control, find the source that is causing you to be out of control. So Kim and I, our house is, it was built in 1984, and it's kind of different. It's kind of a, a contemporary looking house. So they did some weird design things. So we got this pitched roof or pitched ceiling and so it comes down at a really sharp angle and at, right after we had moved in the house I looked up it had just been several days of rain and we had this large water stain on our ceiling so what did I do I looked at the water stain I went outside and I looked at the roof where the water stain was it was perfect and I thought that's odd so I called out a roofer and I said can you please sh show me how the water is getting in through those shingles they look like they're in perfect shape. What's going on? How is it getting through to cause a water stain? He got up there and he looked. He said, it's not coming from the roof. I said, what do you mean? He said, about, about 10 feet away, there was a window. He said, the water's coming from the window. It's running down the, the stud, the beam, the joist, the, the, whatever you call it, and then it's coming out at that spot in the ceiling. So if I get up there and I start fighting that spot, I'm not doing anything to affect the source. And some of you are dealing with spots when you should be going after the source. I want you to find the source that is causing you to live out of control. What is fueling your dysfunction? It might not be the people that disagree with you. It might be that somewhere in your childhood somebody disagreed with you and you've got an unhealed wound in your life. So until you deal with that, you're never going to get rid of the spot. You can paint over it, you can fix it, and it's going to come right back until you get to the source. Here's what your Bible says. Your Bible says take captive every thought that exalts itself against the lordship or the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Do you understand what that means? Lay hold of 
put, put shackles on, put it in bondage. Every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. When you do that, you'll stop the leak. Here's the second thing. If you want to walk into possibility, number two, challenge. You need a challenge. Some of you are so under-challenged. You wonder, why is life so boring? You don't have any challenges. And, and I'm talking bigger challenges than a crossword puzzle in the morning. You need a real challenge. Now understand, 2022 is going to have some fights. Anytime you're trying to get something that's been lost, it's a fight. Don't think because you're gifted or you're anointed or you're on the side of right that you're not going to have to fight something in your life. A fight just means there's something that the enemy doesn't want to let go of. A fight just means that you're making progress. Here's the big idea. Your past can't kill you if you've got something to go after. My past can't touch me as long as I'm moving forward going after something. My past can yell at me. It can call to me. But like the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 3, chapters 3, 13 and 14, I think it is, he said, I'm forgetting those things which are behind. And I'm reaching forth unto the things which are ahead. My past can't touch me when I'm moving forward. Here's a big idea. In 22, don't wish for easy. I wish it was easier. Try pastoring two locations and online. Try growing a new church and remodeling a new church while caring and growing a second church. That's not easy, but I don't want an easy life. Easy sounds so boring to me. No challenge sounds so boring to me. I want something that I've got to go after and I've got to believe God for. Here's what I want you to declare. Away with easy assignments. You don't need a friend. You don't need a job. And those of you praying for a spouse, you don't need a spouse that doesn't stretch you. You need something that will stretch you to believe God for more. If you want to have life and life more abundantly, you need a challenge. I was out running one day and I came in and my legs were hurting so bad. So before I went out to run the next time, Kim said, lay down, lay down on the floor. She put me on the floor and she took my foot and she started trying to push my foot up over my head. Now as she's doing this, tears are streaming down my face. And I'm saying, looking at her saying, why are you hurting me? Why are you doing this to me? And she looked at me and she said, if it's tight, it breaks. So you need to be stretched. If you want to run in 2022, let me tell you who breaks. People that aren't accepting any challenges and don't go through any stretching. But people that are willing to be stretched are people that will run through 2022. So here's what I want you to pray. If you see me slacking, stretch me. If you see me getting complacent, stretch me. If you see me getting burned out, stretch me. I want you to look at Israel in the time of Joshua versus Israel in the time of Judges. Israel in the time of Joshua are fighters. They're conquerors. They're out They're repossessing God's land, repossessing every promise that God gave to them. What happened in the book of Judges? There arose a generation who knew not God or the, the works that he had done for their forefathers. You say, what happened? They got into the land and they became comfortable and complacent and they got settled. And do you know what followed settling? Sin. As soon as they started laying back and taking it easy, sin moved in and you got the whole book of Judges to follow. I don't believe God wants us to get complacent. I don't believe God wants us to get comfortable. I believe God wants us to stretch and believe for more. I heard a story. I think it's a fascinating story. Uh, the fish cod was becoming very popular in America. But the people on the West Coast didn't have access to fresh cod. And so the people on the East Coast, they would catch it. And the first thing they decided to do was they put it on ice. And they put it in these train cars. And they shipped the cod in these train cars of ice all the way to the West Coast. 
Once the cod got there, they found out that when they cooked it, the cod was mushy and tasteless. It wasn't flaky and flavorful. So they said, well, we got to come up with a new way. So they developed a tank car, tanker car that could hold water. And they put live cod in this tanker car and they shipped it to the West Coast. Well, they live fish, they got it off the tanker car, they cooked it, and sure enough, it was mushy and flavorless. And they couldn't figure out what was going on. So they hired some scientists to look into this and, and here's what they found out. They found out that in its natural environment, cod has an enemy called a catfish. And they said, what you need to do is when you put the cod in the tank, put catfish in the tank with it. So now from the east coast to the west coast, those catfish are chasing those cod all over that tank. When they got it in the west coast and took it out and cooked it, it had flavor. It had its flaky consistency. Why? Because the whole trip, it had an enemy. What I'm saying is in 22, God's not going to let you become mushy and flavorless. So God, bring some things into my life to keep me where you want. Keep me full of faith. Keep me full of vision. Keep me full of dreams. If you don't have something that pushes you forward, then sickness, disease, depression, and fear and doubt will take over your life. You've got to have an attitude that says, why sit here till I die? I will not die and would have. I will not die and could have. And I will not die and should have. That's how I live my life. I'm not going to live life on a could have, a would have, or a should have. Possibility is waiting on me. Don't wish things were easier. Wish you were better. And if it's hard, then go at it hard. If it's a challenge, then make up in your mind, God has called me to be victorious in all things. I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me and died for me and gave himself for me. This, you ready for this prophecy, is your year of challenge. Praise God. This is your year to break your routine. Get out of the box. For some of you, it might be finding a new seat in the church. But I've sat here for 47 years it's time to try something new. Get some catfish in your life and get out of the box. Do some things to mess up your routine. Do some things to mess up your schedule. Open your heart and say, God, drop some things into my life that were unplanned so that you can keep me fresh and full of life. Here's the third thing. Confront if you want to live in the land of possibility, you're going to have to make up your mind to confront. I looked up the word confront. You know what it means? Square up and stop running. Anger is associated with confrontation. Here's why. Weak people have to get angry to confront something. You make a weak person angry enough, they'll turn around and confront it. Confrontation, though, is not always adversarial. It means you refuse to be in denial about a situation you need to confront. I heard a story from the Korean War. Enemy forces had surrounded Baker Company. They were cut off from the rest of their unit. For several hours, no word was heard, even though headquarters repeatedly tried to communicate with the missing troops. Finally, a faint signal was received. Straining to hear, the corpsman asked, Baker Company, do you read me? This is Baker Company, came the reply. What is your situation, asked the corpsman. The enemy is to the east of us. The enemy is to the north of us. The enemy is to the west of us. The enemy is to the south of us. After a brief pause, the sergeant from Baker Company came back on with determination, and he said, the enemy is not going to get away from us now. Think you missed it. What I'm saying is, I know it feels like the enemy's got you surrounded. Good. You got him right where you want him. He's not going to get away from you this time. The enemy's coming at you through your kids. He's coming at you through your mind. He's coming at you through your finances. Good. Devil, I got you right where I want you. I've got you in arm's length, and I'm going to defeat you. And the enemies I see today, I will never see again. What have you ran from year after year that you need to confront today? 
when I was growing up on my street, there were bullies. And there was this one, he picked on me all the time. I remember him. And one day he dared me to a fight. He said, you come down to this house in this backyard and I'm going to whip you. And I told my mom, I said, mom, he's wanting to fight me. Mom said, good. Go down there and pop that weasel in the nose. My mom. And when she said that to me, I walked down that street and I walked up in that backyard and that boy standing there said, I was just joking, man. I was just joking. I, he started backing down. Can I tell you what the devil's been doing to you year after year? He's been bringing threats against you because you've never stood up. You've ran from them. You've never faced them. But let me be your mama today. It's time you pop that weasel in the nose. It's time you turn around and confront fear, confront doubt, confront unbelief, confront every enemy that's coming against your life. Stop blaming others for your own devils. Write you out. I know you're going to have a dream list. It's time you write down a confront list. What's the lie you need to confront? What's the attitude you need to confront? What's the habit you need to confront? What's the dead dream you need to confront? And finally, you can stand with me if you want. I'm almost done. Conquer. Be strong. Be very courageous. Do not be afraid. I am with you. Can I tell you what I believe God is daring for you today? I believe God is daring you to be the next I believe God is daring City Gate Church to be the next, never before until City Gate Church came along. Never before until that father took a stand for his children. Never before until that couple stood up and said, this ends with us. Never before until that individual made up in their mind. I don't care if my family did it generation to generation to generation. It ends with me right now. And notice what God did. Never before or since. That God hearkened unto the voice of a man. Here's the big idea. Somebody has to say something for God to perform something. 22 is not your year of shut mouth prayers. 22 is not the year I'm just gonna stand here and God can read my thoughts. The Bible does not say mountains move with your thought. The Bible does not say that you can tell a tree to be plucked up in your mind. The Bible says if you want the mountain to go, you got to turn and you got to speak to the mountain. You got to speak to the tree. So as we wrap up this service today, I want you to lift your hands and I want you to begin to speak to 2022. Come on. I want you to begin to speak into it right now. Speak blessings into your life in 2022. Speak blessings into your family. Speak blessings into your future. I can't do it for you. You got to do it for yourself, Joshua. Open your mouth and watch God hearken to your words. Speak to it. Speak to it. Speak to it. God, I thank you that no plague, no sickness in 22 will come nigh my dwelling place. I thank you, Father, in 22, I'm surrounded by angels and my children are surrounded by angels. I thank you, Father, that in 22, I'm going to walk in the kingdom, talk in the kingdom, live in the kingdom, think in the kingdom. I thank you, God, in 22, this is going to be a year of supernatural favor, supernatural power, supernatural authority. I give you praise and I give you glory right now. In Jesus' name.
come on, I, I really feel an unction that people in this room need to start declaring some things. People in this room need to start speaking some things. I can't speak for you. You gotta speak for yourself and you gotta speak for your family. But I need somebody to do what Joshua did. Lift your hands and begin to declare, this year, I'm the head, I'm not the tail. This year, I'm above, I'm not beneath. This year, I am victorious in all things. This year, I am triumphant. This year, I am more than a conqueror. This year, you have not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. This year, the joy of the Lord is my strength. This year, God is opening windows and pouring out blessings. I don't have room enough to receive them. This year, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This year, this year, no sickness will come nigh unto me. By his stripes I'm healed. By his stripes. This year, this year, you satisfy me with long life. Great is my peace. This year, my testimony will be that of Joshua. God, you're gonna stop time until this enemy is defeated. This year, I'm not running from it, I'm running towards it. This year, I'm gonna... Yeah. I'm gonna run after everything that's been running after me. Come on. This year, hey. this year, you're gonna give me homes I didn't build, Come and on. vineyards I didn't plant, and wells I didn't dig. This year, I thank you that I'm gonna be blessed. I'm gonna walk under the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that you are gonna bless me gratefully. I thank you, Father, that you are gonna pour out the abundant blessing on my life, and I'm gonna walk an abundant life that you promised me. This year, this year, this year I'm gonna be blessed when I leave my home, and this year I'm gonna be blessed when I come back in my home. This year, everything that I touch will be blessed. I'm blessed, my children are blessed, my household is blessed, anyone that gets around me is blessed, the company I work for is blessed, the employees that are close to me are blessed, everywhere I go, goodness and mercy are following me, everywhere I go, goodness and mercy are following me, your glory goes in front of me, you're making crooked, crooked ways straight, you're making high places low and low places high. God, I thank you this year. No mountain can resist me. No devil can stop me. No enemy can defeat me. I am anointed. I thank you that this year the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. This year I am filled with the Holy Ghost to overflowing. This year, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living on the inside of me, bringing strength, bringing life, bringing health to this mortal body. This year will be a yet year. This year will be an until year. This year will be a year that not from the days of Joshua until this year has God heeded the voice of a people. Thank you, God. We declare it and we believe it. In Jesus' name. I just, I want to share something at 2022 that some people need to be set free. 2022, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. You say, what does that mean? It means he is bringing life, strength, power, and health to your mortal body. Some of you need to declare right now, I will live, I will not die to declare the glories of God in the land of the living. 
I am not going to walk through 22 with a cloud of death because of a virus hanging over my head. I refuse. I refuse to let it interrupt my life. I refuse to let it interrupt my thoughts. You have not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I am the blessed of God. I am the anointed of God. I'm a child of the most high God. And I will not put any of these diseases upon you that I put upon your enemies, for I am the God who heals you. By his stripes you are healed. You are healed. You are healed. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. This isn't even the vision message. Like I told you, this is just the on-ramp to where we're going. I wouldn't miss next Sunday. God's going to do some great things. And if for nothing else, get in the building to be anointed for this coming year. Get in the building to be anointed for this 10-day fast. We are going to anoint you, enter into this 10-day fast, and we're going to watch God show himself strong through our lives in 22. 22 the key is you and 22 the key is you you've been praying for a key what God put in my heart is to tell you you are the key you keep waiting for God to do something for you God's looking for bigger he's doing something through you in Jesus name now if you need prayer in any area of your life our care pastors are coming down here if you've never received Jesus as your Savior, come down and let us pray with you. They're coming down at Lebanon. They're here at Forest Park. We want to pray with you today. Do you receive that word today? If you do, tell Jesus, I receive that word. Lord, I bless your people. May we go out of here full of faith and full of power, full of love. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.